Welcome to Redfish Lake in central Idaho, uh, one of the more iconic and popular destinations in Idaho, sitting at the base of the majestic Sawtooth Mountains. We can just see rising up over the, the ridge there. Um, we're right here down by the lake shore and early morning, but probably in a few hours, there'll be lots of people here enjoying the lake, boating, uh, swimming, frolicking, uh, and just enjoying this really neat place. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, off on another geology adventure. And today we're actually gonna take uh, the boat shuttle out across the lake, hike up Redfish Canyon, uh, and do a climb. And so I think I'll do the climb as a separate video, but in this video, we'll mainly be focusing on uh, not just the scenery, but the geology of the lake, uh, the trail up to the rock climb, which has some really exceptional um, geologic features to point out. Redfish Lake is uh, the largest of several lakes that sits at the foot of the Sawtooth Range. And like all the lakes that sit at the base of the Sawtooth, these lakes are all uh, sitting within a moraine. So this big ridge, this thousand foot, maybe not quite that high, but this tall ridge we can see running around the lake at margin here is actually a glacial moraine. So glaciers heavily um, eroded the Sawtooth Mountains. And as those glaciers advanced out into the Stanley Basin, um, these large deposits of sediments are surrounding their margins. And these are known as moraines. And we'll show you some uh, moraine features here in a bit. Um, but we'll go ahead and get ready for our big adventure, head out to the Sawtooths, which are an uplifted um, mountain range. There's a large uh, normal fault, uh, east dipping fault on this side of the range that's pushed the mountains up and dropped the valley down. So we'll uh, go ahead and head across the lake, take our shuttle and start our hike and show you some more of the cool scenery there. Here we are just a few hundred yards from the Redfish Lake Lodge. We're at the east end of the lake and yet there's this massive boulder here. I mean this boulder is house size. It's probably, oh, 30 plus feet tall, 10 plus meters. Uh, who knows how wide it is, maybe 100 plus feet across. And so when we see boulders this big, we sort of think, well, how'd it get here? And in this case, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no stream, there's no water that would move something of this size. And we're well, you know, east of the mountain front. Um, so rock fall is not really an option. There's no cliffs up slope of this. And so this massive boulder is actually sitting on the ridge, a ridge composed of boulders, which you can see here, that encircles the entire lake. No, and this is known as a moraine. So this is a massive boulder that possibly tumbled onto the glacier when it existed thousands of years ago. And then that, that rock along with other rocks were carried with the glacial ice down gradient until they were ultimately um, deposited. Just a quick scenic shot here of Redfish Creek as it tumbles down towards the lake, just showing how beautiful the water is. This runoff here. It's so gorgeous. So beautiful. Okay, we took the boat across the lake and are partway up Redfish Lake Canyon, just looking at some of the beautiful scenery here. Um, a little section of the trail here that comes through this rockfall deposit. So I thought we'd spend a minute here and look a little bit more at these rocks here and talk a bit about um, this geologic unit. So these rocks here in the sawtooths, most of the sawtooths, definitely here at Redfish uh, Canyon, are all a granitic rock that's part of uh, a large expanse of rock. Now, it's not the one that covers much of central Idaho. If you've actually, if you know a little bit about Idaho geology, you know there's something called the Idaho batholith, which is a Cretaceous age, about 70 to 90 million year old expanse of granitic rock. This is not that granite. This is actually a different, younger granite. This granite is called the sawtooth batholith, or the sawtooth pluton, excuse me. The plutons are a little bit smaller 
uh, than Bathyllus in terms of their aerial extent. And the sawtooth pluton is about 45 to 50 million years old. It's from a time period called the Eocene. Um, nice close-up view there of this granitic rock. You might notice that um, it's a little bit pink or pinkish in places. And if I was able to hold up a chunk of this rock next to the Idaho batholith, which is, tends to be more light gray, you would definitely see a color change or a difference in the color between the two. So the Idaho batholith um, is more of a granodiorite. It has a little bit less of a mineral called potassium feldspar than the, the sawtooth pluton, and that's what makes the sawtooth pluton uh, much uh, more pink in color. There's some nice pieces down here uh, where you can see some of that pink color. So that's mainly the mineral potassium feldspar that's coming through that influences the color to some degree. And the grain size varies a little bit. Here I've got a chunk that's a little bit uh, more coarsely grained. Here's a beautiful chunk here of the, showing some of the pinkish color. The dark splotches are lichen, so that's just uh, growth on the outer surface. But you can actually see some of the cleavage planes of those feldspar minerals that make up the interior here. So this is all, just like any granitic rock, this represents uh, the cooled and solidified and crystallized magma chamber. So the Eocene was a time of magma generation here in this part of Idaho, in central Idaho. We have an equivalent unit to this called the Chalice Volcanics that is a, a very diverse assemblage of ashes and, and tufts and everything from basalt to andesite to rhyolite, dacite, um, lava flows, pyroclastic material, um, all sorts of different uh, rocks that make up the chalice volcanics. And the sawtooth pluton is essentially the magma chamber, the solidified magma chamber that sat beneath um, and fed those chalice volcanics at the surface. So remember we have uh, a large normal fault, and this this isn't the fault itself, but this is a good idea here, is that this side of the sawtooth has gone up while the valley side here to the east has dropped. So more or less somewhere in this zone or region, there's a large east dipping normal fault that's brought these rocks to the surface. So the fact that we can see these um, Eocene magma bodies that have solidified brought to the surface um, is due to movement along the sawtooth fault. I think up there along the skyline you really get a better sense of the pink pinkish hue or nature of the sawtooth pluton. So we're going to head up the trail a little bit further. Um, I know there's a couple more cool spots I want to show you along the way and yeah just beautiful day here in the sawtooth. Okay I've come a little further up the trail and there's just this beautiful, stark uh, geologic event that took place here. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the most recent geologic event to impact the Sawtooth was the March 31st, 2020 earthquake. This was a magnitude 6.5 earthquake um, that occurred a few, maybe 12, 15 miles northwest of the town of Stanley. Um, and what it did was shake this entire range and generate rockfall events. And right here crossing the trail is a great example of that. If I, we look back up, there's a path here, a clear um, path. You can see the whitish rock outcrop right here. That's where the rockfall occurred. So the earthquake caused enough shaking that it destabilized some of these rocks. And those rocks, as they fell and tumbled, came right down this path towards our view here. You can see what it did to some of these trees as these large boulders uh, slammed into trees, basically cleared a path through the forest. We can also see some of these white faces of the rock here as some of the rocks started to break up as it traveled down. So here we're looking right up the rockfall descent path coming right through here, you know, breaking all these trees, snapping them in the process. And then if we swing around, looking back downhill, um, we can see a really big boulder here uh, where it came to rest. So that was 
the biggest and the longest traveled piece during this rockfall event, or so it would appear. Um, we can also see right in front of me here is a good sized pit that's maybe a meter or so deep, a couple feet, maybe three meters across. Um, but this would have been where one of these boulders slammed into the ground as it was rolling and tumbling down. Now, I came in 2020 and the trail was not in very good shape right after this rockfall event. It's been three years since, so they've uh, rebuilt the trail through this section. But you can see another big uh, impact crater here from the rockfall event. Another one here. Um, a longer path of destruction going down this way. Let's see if we can get over here out of the sun where it might be a little bit easier to see. Um, but completely obliterating the trees, tearing them up uh, along with some of the forest. And then this large boulder here that I'd estimate is like, oh boy, that meter, or that boulder is probably about five to six meters across, almost 20 feet, I'd say, in diameter, uh, where it came to rest here. So really vivid example of not just the power of these earthquake events, um, but rockfall as a dominant process here in the Sawtooth. And that rockfall event can occur due to earthquakes, uh, like we saw here in 2020, or this granitic rock has some inherent weaknesses to it as this as the magma cools and crystallizes, it tends to develop fractures, concentric fractures within it. And when those fractures are then exposed at the surface, uh, with the weather we get here in the Sawtooth, you can get really pronounced freeze-thaw cycles. And so with all that freezing and thawing, the water expanding in those fractures, eventually that destabilizes the rock as well. So we'll head up the trail a little further. Uh, there's another spot just up ahead I want to show you. So we'll see you just up ahead on the trail. All right, we've reached a section of the trail known as the Garden of the Giants, this area where there's these huge blocks, these immense boulders uh, sitting here along the canyon bottom. And these boulders are every bit as big as the Redfish Lake boulder uh, that I showed at the beginning of the video that's out on the moraine. But here they're way up in the canyon not where the moraine would be, not where the glacier is depositing material, but rather where the glacier would be eroding. So where would these big boulders come from? And if you look at the, if you watched the last little segment I did, if we look up the slope here, we can see uh, a big region of discolored rock, lighter in color. There's a bit of a, a talus apron right here. Um, and so it would appear that rockfall, that these huge boulders have actually tumbled off these cliffs. Now this would be a much older rockfall event than the 2020 one, obviously, that we just saw. And undoubtedly, we could perhaps date some of these trees in here and see what age the trees are that have grown up since the rockfall event to get an idea of when this occurred. But this boulder is just immense. Um, this thing is probably a good... Uh, in terms of width, maybe about 50, 60 feet, 20 plus meters. And in terms of height, it's probably about, you know, seven, eight meters, 20, 25 feet tall. If we walk down the trail a little bit, we can see a few more of these big ones, like this one right here. Um, and then just a big field of these exceptionally large boulders. Here's this big one here, looking back up that way. And then some of these really big boulders. There's one over here in particular that you can actually work your way under. Um, and it's also a good place to sit out uh, a thunderstorm. Let's see right here. Yeah, so this big boulder right here, which is probably about as big as the other one, um, maybe uh, 50, 60 feet across, something like that. And you can see it's partially um, undercut here, kind of resting on some of these other boulders. So the Garden of the Giants, um, a real fun little landmark here along the trail, evidence for big rockfall events in these steep glaciated canyons of the Sawtooth. And we'll just head up the trail from here.
Well, this is a good place as any to end our little video segment today. This is the bottom of Redfish Canyon, um, a little kind of oasis. You can see people down here. It's actually a little swimming hole down here over these granite slabs where the creek comes down, but just a beautiful, magical spot. Uh, the big peaks above and just a real gem here in the Satu. So I hope you enjoyed joining me on this little adventure um, here in the Satus, looking at some of the geology, the recent effects of the rockfall. Oh, look, this guy's about to slide down the rock. There he goes. Um, yeah, so there's a fun little spot here to frolic in the water. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me on this fun little adventure. Um, appreciate all you do and being a loyal viewer. And thanks again. And till next time, just one last view of Redfish Canyon and the Sawtooth. It's a beautiful place here in central Idaho.